people. At the cockpit? Because you're reporting. over on the side. Oh, right, right. In the back. Friends just said that where the docking collar is, yeah, there would be people in there in theory to to go through the docking collar. Yeah, that's where they'll help with any rescue missions. Rescue missions. Yeah, rescue missions. rescuing your ship from you. <laughs> yes. Ben, are you getting any tweets? Okay, tweets. So tweets. I said sleep, but that may be no. some wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, very, very wishful. Let thinking. me see if anyone's been tweeting at me. It's a uh, bandit loaf is my my Twitter account. If you want to ask me a question there. Um, this goes back to when we were talking about Pluto. Someone has pointed out that Pluto is a Plutoid. A Plutoid? <laughs> Plutoid. Oh, here's one for Dave. Uh, could you ask Dave when the next writer's guide will be? We missed yesterday's due to the site being down. Yes. Um, I guess we'll, I guess we'll do it next week. Do which one next week? The last writer's guide. It's supposed to post on Thursday, but okay. we ended yeah, up yeah. because it was a separate one. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll probably... It's it's ready to go. Uh, uh, I think they can wait till next week. They got a lot of content. They they've had yeah. plenty to digest today. But it's got to be done before next Thursday, which is the new. We'll sneak it in there at some point. We close next Thursday, so yeah. What is July? Monday. Why not? Why not? Okay. They've been very patient. The writer's guide. Sticking with us through a 24 hour live stream? Why not give them a writer's guide on yeah. Monday? Doesn't that seem like a yeah. good idea? I would give people who had to listen to me for 24 hours. <laughs> Rest in peace, uh, Robin. So Sophie asks. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> she says, don't fall asleep. Oh, so she has to be greatly right saturated. <laughs> Don't fall asleep, we'll put you in the Idris. Don't fall asleep, we'll put you in the Idris. Is that bad? Uh, I want to be in the I think Idris. a lot of people want to be in the Idris. Yeah, so I was like, I, I'm, sure, I'm not sure that's a bad <laughs> thing. On the hangar <laughs> stuff, you'll definitely see your cargo in your holds if you go back and see your hold. I'm not so sure about seeing it transferred from ship to ship, so the one thing we don't know yet is we kind of would like some cool way, like when you outfit your ship, that you actually see the bits get put on it, but right now... You'll arrange it in your sort of hollow um, UI system, and then they'll just pop onto the ship. Hard uh, crates. The wouldn't it be really cool? It would be cool to see like some robot come out and start like attaching the parts. Yes. Here's a Rob question. A Rob question. How will you address linguistics for aliens? Are you going with the Babelfish approach, or will they just be unintelligible? Unintelligible is no fun. It'll, it'll be some sort of translator, I'm sure. Maybe, uh... We're just going to babble? Maybe it's an upgrade. You have to, to get uh -huh. the better translator, and to be better at trade, you have to get the... Mm. So you had a thing about uh, French localization, which I think we said yes to before. No, we're talking about aliens, though. I don't know. Okay. Okay. French people Should count as that. Give the Twitch trash It'd be great if all the aliens spoke French. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I was looking at the Twitch questions. Oh, oh okay. There was a uh, question about is there going to be localized in French? It would answer a lot of questions, though. Bonjour, je suis. How are you today? I, I don't know. Tired. <laughs> tired? Who's tired? Tired? What's that? I think we're beyond tired. We've wrapped around now. It's like going over the swing set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this chat's going pretty quite quick on Twitch. Yeah, I was trying to watch the chat roll, and honestly, they were reposting the questions so fast, I couldn't read any of them. Uh, Gray says, will the M50 be able to dock in the snub fighter bay in the Constellation? No. The M50 is no. pretty small. Unless you fly very fast. But it's not in the Constellation. The Constellation, no. No, so the Constellation's the, got the, the, uh, the P-52 is small, and it has to fold its wings up. Yeah. yeah, the Idris, the Idris, will fit in the Idris. In the Idris, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but that probably could fit. It'd yeah, fit. I think it would fit. Anything the same size or smaller than a Hornet will fit. Yeah, we can cut it. Uh, what's it? Hmm? Here's an interesting question with the P-52. Do you have any long-range, rough thoughts about expanding the kind of craft that you can stick in those tender bays? Tender bays, rather? Uh, right now, I think we're just thinking about the P-52, but starting a table for the eventual peace talk. Oh, sure. that we, 
like okay. less of better and more skin. I don't know. They've been at it. For They'll be very peaceful when they're asleep. <laughs> we might get to watch them die. <laughs> I don't think the fight is particularly heavy in terms of mass and what you what you're doing. I, I can't even remember. Ben, do you remember what we had the P52 actual weight as? Um, I do not, but it's it's very uh, light comparatively. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, much much smaller than any of the other ships. You're a smaller than your ships. I think it's thrust to weight ratio is the best in the game right now, or something like that. It has a high theoretical potential. Or just a few of them. Uh, thought about thrust engine. It's it's, it's going to be pretty pretty spry. But not jump capable. No. So it says it has it's a fighter with a very specific role. So quit trying to use it for everything else. Right. Uh, How the other ships before? Fashion. I don't think we need this. Trash everywhere. I know. Hey Chris, could you talk to us a little bit about how you envision like a a player group or guild like? Using some of the larger ships, like the the cruisers, destroyers, and Bengals that they're talking about, as a forward base. Uh, well, I mean, basically, the bigger captain ships would be sort of like imagine them as sort of a movable, uh, whatever you want to think of it as a space station or something. So, essentially, you and uh, you know the group of people that you're playing with can have some of your ships, some of your cargo on the bigger ships. And uh, you'll also be able to sort of essentially save in safe air when you're not under combat, uh, like you're in orbit around a planet or something. The downside is that the bigger capital ships are persistent. So uh, if you're not playing and someone shows up, um, you know, you're not really defending your, your ship, or none of your squad mates or guild mates are, the ship could be taken away from you. Would you be able to conceivably change your loadout with one of the larger ships if you could dock inside of it? Uh, if you have the item, if the items can hit the ships, like the bigger ships on hangers, like anything else, they can store ships and other items, and that's the same for a hangar that we're showing sort of in the hangar app, or a hangar that would be sitting on a Bengal carrier. And it's just sort of up to us to say, it can hold these hangar items, or how many items it can hold, and how right. many. So, what do you envision happening? Like, if you log off and someone takes your your ship from you, what's going to happen to all your stuff that was in that hangar? Uh, what do you mean in terms of the big persistent ship? Yeah. No. So, well, you're gonna lose it. Okay. But no, not but not your not the big ship. Obviously, that's gonna go with the people that took it next. But say if I docked and logged off while I was docked in the in the ship, what happens then? Well, if you're keeping items and and, and ships in on a persistent capital ship, and you you've gone and you log off, someone comes takes the ship from you, you lose everything you'll have on that ship. Okay. Yeah. Means like if I dock my freelancer on the Bengal and then I log off for the night, when I log back in, will my freelancer still be in the Bengal? Well, so what if, even if somebody else. Oh, you mean, you mean like if you haven't been attacked or whatever, and you come back on and no one's attacked you, you'll be basically back on the Bengal with your freelancer. But if someone comes and takes it while you're sleeping, then it's all gone. Okay. That okay. makes sense. Yep. We are getting ready for the uh, Legante Kin Shadow uh, Peace Summit. We'll have that in just a moment. Were they going to recap for everyone? I think so. Uh, you want to, Mr. Producer? Sir, come in. Wonder if you want to start writing the. Uh, Got a Kin Shadow. Yeah, we're uh, doing that. Uh, we're we're trying to get them to actually be able to in, be in the same room together. Okay. So uh, once once we've got a little bit of peace there, we'll uh, run those videos and then uh, escort them into the room for uh, uh, for talks. And um, Doctor Hawk will be mediating uh, between the two of them. So uh, we'll see how good. it goes. And this will be live and personal and as raw as it gets. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, until then, I guess we can take a couple more questions. Uh, let's see if I have any. Um, do hold on just a moment. 
I like watching me come in and sit down after I come in and sit down. Just enough, enough of a yeah. delay to make it really this weird at this creepy, time of yeah. night. Yeah. Night, is night this morning. Is, this is tomorrow. What, what day is today? <laughs> today is tomorrow. We're in the future. Okay, here's, here's a lengthy question. Uh, we hear a lot about how the physics engine will simulate flying around with both intact and damaged ships. Mm -hmm. Now we know that the 315P comes with a tractor beam. How will this be implemented in the physics simulations? What objects in the game will I be able to affect it with? Will it affect my own ship uh, as much as the objects I target with? Will I be able to see a target ship's flying away from me and pull them back? Can I use it to slingshot my own ship around objects like meteorites, gaining speed and saving fuel? Can I use it to push objects away from my ship or out of my way? I thought Twitter had a character limit. <laughs> I was going to say, that's uh, a lot of questions yeah, in one question. This, this person has a uh, person has actually uh, sent me a link to their pastebin post because it wouldn't fit on Twitter. <laughs> this uh, reminds me a lot of the questions on my forum. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you, Robin, and there are nine of them. Yeah. <laughs> do a good job with those, though. Some, no, some, some question A, C, 3. If, so if question <laughs> 4 was answered as correct, then will it affect the impact of That's question point two? Point. Please refer to question B, 2.2. Point 2. Point two. I know module takes place on a planet. Oh, wait, this is a question. <laughs> <laughs> good answer! Let's talk tractor beams. Uh, tractor beams. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. I, my first thought on tractor beams is Caterpillar. not going to work super well to tractor something that is moving very fast. Mm -hmm. So your goal is to disable something before you can tractor it. That makes sense. Um, I mean, given the physics engine, you would think that when you have two objects connected by a tractor beam, if one of them is moving, then the faster moving one could pull the slower moving one. I guess mm -hmm. you could tow yourself around asteroids to save fuel. I don't know. We'll have to see how it works. Feels like one of those things where we're going to simulate what we think a tractor beam would be, and then if people want to find interesting uses for it, uh, they can. I can see some emergent gameplay coming from that. See what you can do with it. I mean, in theory, it's just more physics. Yeah, but so. it's the benefit of having an actual working physics engine. We can set it up to have like an intergalactic uh, billiards league. <laughs> Oh, is a tractor beam the same thing as a repulsor beam? Mm -hmm. That's an upgrade. I like the way you think. Yeah. So I'm not sure if it's a pusher. I think it's a puller. Yeah, it is too. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's mostly going to be a matter of experimentation once we, we start modeling the physics of it. See if anyone else has tweeted at me since and since oh, since yeah. I realized that you started reading your Twitter feed. So yeah. um, do you plan any upgrades to the base so you can dock something slightly larger in expense for cargo capacity? No, not on the constellation. Now, no, those you, those bays are built into the the superstructure of the ship. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to cram uh, a larger fighter in there. Somebody said to write some fan art of a constellation stuck into the bay of a constellation, and it'll just be ugly. That approaches like World War Four. When there are two starships and they love each other very much. So, uh, what you guys chatting about now? What's the topic? Whatever. Yeah, we're, we're taking oh, questions hey, on Twitter. So, coherence so gonna, is not happening. Uh, over here. Slide in here. All right, so, somebody awake. Yeah, I got some sleep. To carry the discussion. So, uh, if the fans, if it's somebody's monitoring, if you have any animation questions, I'm, I can answer them right now. Yay! Yeah, the animator is here. That sounds great. So, uh, <laughs> all, we need, all we need is uh, a computer with a chat roll going so you can see the questions. Will there be really large, non-flyable, but ductable ships which so. guard jump points Stations like a freelancer. Yeah. Non animation question. Next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, now, it's not all about you, you, you. <laughs> so far, none of us. <laughs> here, here, we don't care about animation. Just give us the ships. Brian, here's one for you. 
Uh, this is a mocap question from Pin Mas or Pie Master. How detailed are the props for mocap going to be? Um, the great thing about motion capture is it doesn't really matter what the props look like uh, because you're just putting markers on them and capturing the marker data. So a lot of times for like sci-fi guns, what we'll do is we'll go to Home Depot. Uh, or first we'll print out like a life-size, you know, schematic side view of the the weapon. We'll go to Home Depot and we'll get like pipe, metal pipe or PVC pipe, and we'll put it together into that rough shape of the gun. Kind of give us it gives it that weight and shape to it, so the hand placement is in the right place. And uh, then we just put markers on it, make sure that the prop isn't going to reflect infrared back at the camera because that, that can be an issue. But uh, just you know, put marker data on it and we capture that. And things like if a character has to step into a spaceship, Somebody we're not going to build something that looks like a spaceship. We're just going to have some stairs and like a little platform to step off onto. So we'll climb up the ladder and then when you get to the top, we'll step off. Something like climb, a good example would be the catwalk. So. Uh, that, that's in the hangar. You see the catwalk up uh, near the ceiling. There's a ladder you're going to be able to climb up. So you'll walk up, uh, you'll, you'll uh, mount the ladder, climb up, and step off under the catwalk. Well, when we motion capture that, um, we, gotta think, we have to think about how it's, it's broken down. So you'll, we'll probably have like a mount animation where we'll go and we'll do a really nice step onto the ladder. Then we'll do a cycle where we'll actually climb up the ladder, uh, get a nice cycle out of that. And then we'll do an animation where we step off the ladder and onto a platform. Uh, so we'll probably have like maybe a five foot scaffolding with a ladder strapped to it. And then we'll climb up that ladder uh, and get to that, the right point, get the actor in the right position to kind of match. Because that's something that we have to think about on the technical side is, is matching poses. So we kind of have to have a technical director helping out during the motion capture shoot, making sure the actor hits his mark. So then we'll be up on that ladder, we'll just kind of step off that ladder and kind of, kind of capture that motion. Um, oh, we didn't show that. <laughs> I had an animation, but I just re remembered it and get, make it into the uh, director's cut of our character getting into the 300 eye. But uh, that's basically uh, that's basically what I did is to, to make our character get into the Aurora, which I have that animation almost complete, and uh, animation of the character getting into the 300 eye. It was three animations that I captured individually and edited and stitched together, and did a little more editing, and made it fit the the ship. So that was probably a long-winded. <laughs> that that yeah. killed at least three minutes. <laughs> so uh, I, I do. I leave the question from Twitter here. That's not. It's not about animation. Oh, okay, right. I've got an animation. Question. Wait, I'm ready. Hold on. I'm always ready. Okay. Question over here. Okay. Has uh, will there be methamphetamines or similar illegal drugs in game that will have in game benefits besides trading for money? In game benefits? In -game, well, um, I think what they're thinking is you know, your character is faster or it improves their stats. Or you but get a what stats? Just, yeah, the thing about Star Citizen is that it's your own skill that's important. So if, uh, Methamphetamines are going to improve your pilot, but you have to actually. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we do not encourage any use of illegal wait, wait. substances here I, I say, at Cloud Imperium. I say it's like it's like reality, right? You take the, this illegal substance which import for perform um, enhances your performance, and then you drop below your actual stats, and then you we don't eventually have you have to eventually you have to keep taking them in order to feel normal. <laughs> Itself out. Great. Like, oh, this, is, this, this is dark star citizen. <laughs> we, Wing Commander actually did have a great mission back in the day where you could get drunk. You had the Wing choice three. to get drunk before the mission, and if you did, if you kept taking shots at the bar, the was blurry just, cam. You, oh, it was blurry, awful. And, uh, your, your joystick would respond backwards, and <laughs> it was awful to fly that mission drunk. You had to do it once. Yeah. But yeah, I remember Mark Hamill staggering out of the bar. <laughs> and you get in the ship, and everything's motion blurred, <laughs> and yeah, weird control behavior. It was, it, it was it was worth doing once, and then you had to go back and make all the right choices so you could actually finish the mission. <laughs> yeah, so we have a okay, question over here from the chat roll from uh, Riggs, wondering how you get to do hand animation and if it's a three point that you're using. I'm sorry, what was that? Hand animation. Could you get that? Cause maybe a little close to the mic. Uh, it was about hand animation, and if you're going to use three-point system. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> why it's not picking me up? 
I don't know. Uh, I don't know about the three point system, uh, but things will be hand key. There's no way that you can get away from doing hand key animation. Things will be. We're, we're going to motion capture as much as we can. We want that look, style, and feel for our game um, of, of a very high end animation. There are definitely going to be things that we can't capture. Don't ask me what it is just yet, <laughs> but uh, uh, those things will be hand keyed. And really, um, there, there's two philosophies of, of motion capture, right? Uh, there's the purist, where they try to capture the actor's performance. They try to make sure that performance comes through on the character. Um, and they try to make it as pure as possible. So they go through great lengths to build the sets, to scale to what whatever's in their movie or their, their commercial or video game uh, <clears throat> to lie, so that the actor does exactly what the game character or the cinematic character is going to do. Uh, then there's the philosophy of like, you know what, motion capture is great to get us, you know, 80% there, you know, 75 or 90% there. And then we're going to take it and put our own little bit of flair onto it and, and embellish it and, <clears throat> and make it kind of, it almost gives it its, a, a kind of a half motion capture part hand key look to it okay. and uh, what a, and, the, and the philosophy behind that is what makes it cool what can what can I do to make this in particular action really cool and that's kind of that's kind of my philosophy I, I'm the the latter of the two um, if it if it takes some hand keying to to make a piece of motion capture feel good uh, I'll, I'll do that I'll, I'll delete uh, keys on an arm and I will I'll use the rest of the body's motion capture and I'll make that arm do whatever it needs to do for that in particular motion. There's there's going to be things that we can't really do. Uh, I've worked on games where I've had to have characters come in contact with each other and do a some, sort of like a, a melee execution where you grab the guy and you stab him and you throw him down and, and whatnot. And uh, and that's, that's usually hand keyed. Um, a lot of times it's hand keyed because you don't have time to go back into a motion capture studio and get two actors and suit them up and and uh, and do it. Um, so I'll hand key that kind of stuff. A lot sometimes the interactions have to be heavily edited to make sure that the characters interact properly. Um, so there's definitely a hand key element to motion capture. Um, but the great thing about uh, this project is we're going to have our motion capture studio, right? So we can go back into the studio and we can capture. Those two characters, those actors, uh, you know, grappling or whatever it happens to be. Only actors get cranky when you stab them. Uh, I would. Only once. Well, that's the great oh, thing about. Right, once. That's point. the great thing about motion capture, right? You, you're not actually. You can pretend to stab them. Well, I have anything in your hand. I mean, let's, let's, let's <laughs> <my> <laughs> this is a Chris I, Roberts game. There better be some actual stabbing. <laughs> so I've got an animation uh, question. Oh, uh, we're actually going oh, to. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. There's more. Go. Oh, we are. Uh, Legante and Kin Shadow have uh, reached a point where they're willing to sit down and talk. So we're going to cut to a little, a couple of clips of their adventures, and uh, we'll have them in here in just a moment to talk to Doctor Hawk. Doctor Hawk is the moderator. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. The room. Shadow again. I uh, crashed as you saw in my last video, but I have no idea where I am. I spent the last three hours climbing out of this tree. Who is that? Legante.
Legante, Kin Shadow. And after years of fighting, this is finally starting to get a little too hectic around right? here. You guys are making people around here nervous. You know, things are getting a little out of hand. Let's just finally have you, and I don't mind as Dr. Hark to mediate this, so let's see if we can solve this. Do you mind telling uh, what started all this, Kin Shadow? Well, it started all back when we were in both uh, SQ42, good old days, but uh, started with uh, uh, Legante giving me an expired coupon. It was part of poker winnings. And, uh, you know, it was for a sandwich or something like that. And I went to go redeem it at the, uh, the quartermaster. You know, the boys got a good old laugh out of that. And so I decided to get Legante back. Had uh, maintenance weld his locker shut and uh, Legante uh, retaliated and started to build from there. I'd have to say that it kind of peaked for a while. He acts as a general of the 57 population. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's not cast stones here. I mean, you're the one who poured the curry powder into the ventilation system of the asteroid base and okay. asphyxiated all the people there. I don't think pointing fingers or, you know, as you said, chaos and so is going to get anyone anywhere. We need to resolve this, so let's see if we can work towards a resolution. You know, Ken do you think you can do anything to work towards a resolution? All right, all right. I regret that I have been unable to successfully kill you so far. Seriously. Okay, that, that's, that's called a threat. That's, that doesn't count. This is not a threat. I commit to trying not to kill you in the future. That's a step in the right direction. At least. Look on to you. Is there anything you can Oh, yeah. I have this cube on. There's equal amounts of love and uh, derision on the uh, chat roll over there. <laughs> okay, I think it's there. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a riot, man. How's the chat roll responding? Like the chat roll would. Yeah, yeah. Up stones it's around. the chat yeah, roll. Yeah, yeah. Mute ourselves, do you think? 50% of them loved it, 50% of them hated it, 75% of them were asking about the cut list. <laughs> let's, uh, let's just go to the old chest now. Yes. <laughs> Director's cut, 300 <laughs> eye. <laughs> bring it out. Then bring out when it down. Loop. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Welcome back, Ben. Hey, guys. We're almost there. Yeah. It's kind of the home stretch. Yeah. This is the part we're not going to remember tomorrow. I got an awesome parking ticket. That's like my trophy of this awesome event. Wow. Yeah. Where'd you, where'd you park? Well, right on the curb. It's just they, I didn't know that they started it back up at 6. I thought it started at like 8, so I missed it by like 10 minutes. It sucked. Like, I literally walked out, and it had like, it was like 8.43, and I walked out at like 8.52. Oh, no. Was, come on. So... Good times. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, let's see. Got a couple more questions from Twitter we can look oh, at. Yeah. Uh, on Gamescom? Yeah. Yep, yeah, having fun. That is, it's posted though, right? Uh, I don't know if it's posted. Oh, we have to talk about animation. Lost by Embraer. Oh, you want me to go try to find him again? Uh, only if you want to hear him talk about animation a lot. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was grumbling. No, see if he, I'll see if he wants it. 